students, both offline and watching us online. We welcome our guests, our chancellor, Dr. M. R. Jairam, our chief guest, Professor Raghunandan, our chief executive, Sri M. R. Srinivas Murthy. I'm counting the number of <laughs> And our pro vice chancellors, research and health sciences, Dr. Govind Kadambi and Dr. Sundaresh. Please take your seats. Once again, a very good morning to all of you and the students who are uh, wa watching this program online and waiting to take a plunge into a professional program at one of the best universities in the country, Ramaya University of Applied Sciences. You have made a very important decision for yourselves and a good one at that, in choosing an institution that is a perfect blend of strong values with a focus on welcoming the future. A young university, it is a branch of a strong rooted tree, the Gokula Education Foundation, which is over 50 years old. Ramaya University of Applied Sciences, created by an act in the state of Karnataka, India, came into existence in December 2013. Here, education is seen as a journey undertaken with the exploration of mind and soul. At RUAS, we emphasize on the teaching of fundamental principles while imparting skills for today and the future. We believe that our students should not just find a career, a vocation or a job but be path-breaking leaders of society, thinking out of the box, carving a niche for themselves and marking their presence in their respective fields with positive strides for their profession and community at large. As a long-standing faculty member of this great institution, I, Dr. Vibha Shetty, welcome you to the inaugural program of the undergraduate program right on the eve of leaving a difficult year behind us and the start of a new year of opportunities for all of us. We start with the Ramaya Anthem, a reflection of our values and ethos. Jnanam Vidnanam Chabakti Sahitam. Four short words with an ocean of meaning. My oars of curiosity Propel forward my boat of knowledge on the river of wisdom towards a horizon of enlightenment. The energy of this universe is devotion. Devotion to my guru, my teacher, devotion to the quest to the unreachable horizon. I may never arrive, yet I forever move forward. For the loftiest goal is the journey itself. The Ramaya Anthem. <laughs> Yana Vidyana Vidya Vinaya Pushana Kiramaya Samoa Yana Vidyana Vidya Vinaya Pushana Kiramaya Samoa Samstana Thank you. 
Vice Chancellor Research is a fount of wisdom and is a stickler for meticulousness and an eye for detail. That perhaps could be an indicator why he's listed in the marquee who is who in the world, marquee who is who in science and engineering and in Asia and Dictionary of International Biography, Cambridge, England. Dr. Kadambi has been granted 22 US patents and has filed several more patent applications. He has authored and co-authored more than 50 research publications in peer-reviewed international journals and conferences. He also served as a reviewer for IEEE transactions on antennas and propagation. May I request Dr. Kadambi to give the welcome address, please. Distinguished Chief Guest of uh, today's function, Professor Raghunandan, respected Chancellor, respected Chief Executive of Gokula Education Foundation Medical, my colleagues, Dr. Sundresh, Dr. Sai Baba, and respected Dr. Razdan, dear incoming students and their hopeful parents, media personnel, friends, and colleagues. At the outset, let me begin by welcoming one and all for this inaugural function. Also, let me congratulate all the incoming students and their parents for having chosen to pursue graduation study. Further, I also thank them for having chosen our university as a platform to pursue their undergraduate education. Now that you are with us, the underlying reasons for your choice should be a history, and it is our appeal that all of you should treat and consider our university as a platform to build, mold, and shape your future career. In the mid 60s, our former president and also one of the greatest philosophers of all time, Dr. Radha Krishnan, while addressing a convocation in Maharaja Sayadir University, Baroda, one of the remarks he made was, the role of university should not be restricted only to imparting the knowledge, but a greater responsibility lies in institution and university to instill civility and purpose in their life. So following his sessions and his ideas, some of my remarks go well beyond the conventional wisdom of uh, Welcome address normally one year, actually. Now, in the context of our, this inauguration, this is a virtual inauguration yielding to the circumstances. Social distancing, mask, sanitizers have become additional important entities of our life, day-to-day -day life also. And we have been forced to define a new normal of our daily life. But uh, human is a social being, and by nature, Social isolation is not really preferred. Therefore, new concept called socially connected, but physical separation is emerging as a move to move on with your life. And the mode of today's function is expected to be there for some time, at least for the present. In the context of the extraordinary situation that has arisen due to the COVID-19, as you are aware, and also might have experienced that COVID-19 has brought with it a lot of interruptions, disruptions, and ripples across the globe. The present and immediate past generations might have heard the struggling and the torturing days of world wars and pandemics of the last few decades. But at best, I think this, this COVID-19 have forced us some visualization 
it is believed that the past nine months have brought back some reminiscence of it. The world and our country have been subjected to a lot of hardship. The resulting impact is affecting us both at individual and institutional levels. Everybody would like to forget this year and move on fast to the next year, which is commencing from tomorrow. But even in extreme struggles, which are of unimaginable proportions, always there can be silver lining. COVID-19 has brought the importance of science, both conventional and health sciences, engineering, technology, public policy, public health, more importantly, political system and their leadership, importance of health and safety, hygiene, life, living style and food habits. Probably in our primary school or, or, or middle school would have studied the contributions of Edward Jenner and Joseph Priestley, the earliest contributors of vaccine. At that time, we read only as a part of lesson. Now we are experiencing the, the urgency and the need of vaccine. Moreover, we have also realized the dual concept of duties and responsibility of both the individuals and the society for overall welfare of the society. One of the sectors that has been severely affected and very significantly is the education sector spanning from KG to super speciality. In a way, it reiterates the well-known saying that uh, bombs and missiles are not required to destroy a nation. Destruction of education system itself is a destruction of the nation. Almost every institution in the world has been severely affected by COVID-19 and every institution is trying to come out of this extraordinary situation. Despite the pandemonium caused by the pandemic, our university has tried all the avenues and resources at its disposal to ensure that the academic activities and the operational aspects of the university are as good as it can be under the prevalent extraordinary scenario. While still adhering to the norms, protocols of MHA, State Government of Karnataka, UGC and other regulatory body, our university has ensured that the conduct of online classes, assessment of assignments, semester, end exams, as well as the supplementary terms of the previous academic year in an, have been conducted in an amicable manner to minimize the hardship to the students. Despite the pandemic, I think year 2020 has been very eventful and very fruitful to us. We got the AICT approval for BTEC, MTEC, MBA, BHM and PharmD program, as well as for BHM. We started two new faculties, School of Social Sciences and the School of Law and we are expecting a provisional approval from BCA, which had the virtual inspection only two days earlier. We started the new PG program, MA Public Policy and Masters in Public Health. And we also started the Center for Excellence in AI and Computational Mechanics. And also about 900 students are going to graduate uh, from this year convocation. And this I can say, we have exemplified the statement, success and excuses, they don't talk to each other. If you, if you cite success, you have to forget the excuse, or if you cite ex excuse, you have to forget the success, actually. And our university has got uh, 37 department catering to 31, uh, 31 UG program and 32 PG program. Our student enrollment rate is above 5,000, and about 320 students are pursuing their doctoral studies. Now, coming back to the importance of this inaugural function, I feel that this function is the first opportunity for us to initiate a direct dialogue with our new students and their families. The stakeholders in any education obviously are students, teachers, parents, and the society or community. Synergy and synchronization between the stakeholders are key to the effectiveness and efficacy of it. Today's function is all about following the six entities, new students and their future, learning, education, knowledge, faculty fraternity, and university. And what can we do together? Since a long time, the need and importance of continuous efforts of students and teachers are explicit and clear. We also know the, the role of parents in our initial years of education. Very often we fail to emphasize that the need of the continuous of the role of parents in this mission of higher education, higher education and professional education. Their steady involvement, proactiveness, continuous encouragement and moral support to the student, uh, children are equally important. We live in a competitive world. Every batch brings it with a, a need for new dimensions of our introspection, improvement, and improvisation. These are a must for us to regenerate ourselves to the demands of our duties, 
and to the aspirations of uh, the new incoming students. In the process, we can bring a positive change in student as well as in our outlook for their academic journey. For success, apart from right place, right time, a third dimension of right approach is also equally important. Therefore, in our university, we place significant emphasis on the right dynamic and scalable approach uh, to the academics to facilitate more effective learning. This function is aimed towards the initiation of our students to the new approach. For every student, entry into any new, new course or a program is an academic transition. Needless to say, anxiety, apprehension, sense of newness and possible loneliness, uncertain shroud of future, and many other unsettling thoughts are bound to be there. This is so because we are human and we tend to prematurely or subconsciously comprehend, visualize anything and everything out of fear and anxiety. We are here to ensure a beginning of a smooth transition. It is the collective responsibility of the university and the parents to lend a touch of comfort and a figure of assurance to the young budding minds. Surely, this will help them to look forward to, to their aspirations, duties, and responsibilities with a sense of purpose, confidence, discipline, and devotion. History reminds that in the past, as a nation, we have lost an opportunity to remain in the top bracket of highly acknowledged and accomplished nation in terms of scientific and technological endeavor. Swami Vivekananda said once, a nation is advanced in proportion to education and intelligence spread among the masses. Of late, we are hearing a lot about government initiative and its emphasis on research, innovation, skill, and structural reforms to higher education. We are and have been emphasizing these since a long time. Often, we are caught in between the emphasis on basics and fundamentals and the need for rapid adaptation to fast evolving technologies. Technologies keep changing and they do, they do depend upon how the fundamentals are being used in it. To switch over to various technologies at a faster, faster rate, one should have a fair and a good grasp for the basics. A career of a student now lasts for about 35 to 45 years. The role of academic institutions and university in preparing and motivating the students for a sustained and long career should go well beyond the short-term goals of uh, the first, first employment. In this regard, I would like to quote uh, Mahatma Gandhi's statement, the real difficulty is that people have no idea about what education truly is. We assess, assess the value of the education in the same manner as we assess the value of land or shares in the stock market. We want to provide only such education as would enable the student to earn more we hardly give any thought to the improvement of the character of the educated. Dr. Kalam said once, attitude determines altitude. Conversely, to reach a desired altitude, we should mend and mold our attitude. Without an ambition linked to its profession, we may, be, we may become soon irrelevant. In a true sense, higher education is a gateway to professional excellence and a path for the professional career lasting many decades. There is a paramount importance in UG and PG program. In the context of higher education, the orientation, mindset, interest, grasp, and proficiency achieved during this program will have a long lasting impact on the entire future. Normally, it will also help to define, shape, and mold the outlook of our young minds. Keeping all this in view, and particularly the academic and the professional career of students, after many cycles of discussions and deliberations, we have structured our UG and PG curricula the good practices of global standards and the core theme of outcome-based education are always strongly embedded in all our curriculum. The success of this program hinges on the interlude proactiveness and the deeper involvement of both the students and the teachers. We urge that you are here to own the specialization of your choice and not to merely manage it actually. Introspection, scalability, sustained interest, persistence, patience, devotion to the spirit of learning, and more importantly, never give up attitude on both the fraternities are equally important in our success. According to one of the powerful quotes of Dr. Kalam, if a country is to be corruption free, corruption free and become a nation of beautiful minds, I strongly feel there are three societal members who can make a difference. They are the father, the mother and the teacher. Actually. Therefore, together through a sense of reciprocation and participation, we can bring tremendous positive change and together we can enjoy the journey of learning actually. And what do we expect from students and parents? I appeal and urge our young incoming students to always remember, recollect 
the primary purpose of their journey. Anything else they do should be in addition to their academics. Nothing else should be done at the expense of curtailing their all important goal of academic pursuit. That is the reason probably Mahatma Gandhi once said, enjoy your life as if you live for a day, but learn as if you live forever. How to become great and how learning is related to greatness is exemplified through Dr. Kalam's statement, learning gives creativity, creativity leads to thinking, thinking provides knowledge and knowledge makes you great. We want our students to be studious learners, creative individuals, great thinker and knowledgeable too. According to Swami Vivekananda, perfection does not come from belief or faith. Talk does not count for anything. Parrot spoon and perfection comes through selfless work. We often say strength respects strength. In the contemporary scenario, knowledge is power. That is why sometimes we say balasya moolam vignanam. According to Dr. Radhakrishnan, a life of joy and happiness is possible only on the basis of knowledge and size. And to quote the power of concentration, which is essential for any academic journey, Dr. Swami, uh, Mr. Swami Vekanda said, the world is ready to give up its secret. If only we know how to knock, how to give the give it the necessary blow, and the strength and force of the blow come from concentration. All our past records may not be spectacular, and all of us may not have talent or equal talent, but each one of us have ample opportunity to develop standards and continuous improvement in the talent and grasp will surely result in proficiency and extraordinary skill. And according to Dr. Kalam, you cannot change your future, but you can change your habits and your habits will in turn change your future. And Mahatma Gandhi said, failure comes only when you forget our ideals and objectives and principles and confidence and hard work is the medicine to kill the disease called failure and it will make you successful. We always hear the statement, fortune favors the brave, but uh, Louis Pasteur said, fortune favors the prepared mind. And the it is the endeavor of our university to achieve this prepared mind through teaching, inspiration, mentoring, and leading by example, and through demonstration of power of resolve and unwavering desire. Let us remember that uh, the four Ds, namely deed, dedication, discipline, and devotion, determine the other day that is destiny. With these remarks, let me revert back to my formal welcome. A note, uh, we are privileged to have a distinguished academician and also a great research coordinator, Professor Raghunandan. He is here to be the chief guest and he will deliver the inaugural address. On behalf of our university and all the participants of this function, it is my great pleasure to extend a warm welcome to Professor Raghunandan now may I request uh, Dr. Rajasekhar Raj Swami, Dean of uh, FET, to present him a part. Vision, vision, action, and approach are sometimes called as the attributes of a, a true leader. And our chancellor epitomizes all these attributes at a very short notice when you requested to, it, uh, to be part of this function, despite all the preoccupations, and he has consented and uh, he is gracing the function. And what we are today and uh, the universities is wholly and solely attributed to the vision. Again, it is my personal privilege and also on behalf of uh, the entire RUS fraternity and all the participants of this function and also the incoming students. I extend a very warm well welcome to our chancellor and may I require, may, may I request Dr. Bharat, the Dean of Faculty of Pharmacy to present him a part please. The Chief Executive of Gokula, Gokula Education Foundation Medical, Sri Srinivas Murthy brings him with enormous experience, expertise, and also he has been associated with a number of institutions during his career. During the last three years, he has been the guiding and advisory spirit for our university. When we requested him, also he also consented and is gracing the function through his presence. And on behalf of the RUS and all the participants and all the incoming students, again, it's my great pleasure to welcome Sri Srinivas Murthy for this inaugural function. Now, let me request my colleague, Dr. Srinivas Murthy, so welcoming with a power plot, please.
also welcome my colleague dr sundresh for this function i request my colleague dr sharath to present and welcome dr sundresh with a portrait dr sai baba is a the recent new addition to our university has yes, recently assumed the charge of registrar for university he he, he has a, he had an outstanding career in the department of uh, atomic energy, energy uh, and uh, he is from uh, kalpakam and he brings him with uh, varieties of experience not only in the subject of chemistry but also with the research management and uh, policies again i welcome uh, my colleague professor sai baba to this function on behalf of our university and also all the participants and the incoming students again I extend him a very warm welcome now i request uh, professor meti to welcome uh, professor sai baba with you we also have the the special and the significant presence of uh, dr razdan because uh, we know akela not to be again uh, a person with uh, vast experience in the administration of university he was vice chancellor of uh, dwi patil university for a long long time and now he is the he is advisor to the gokul education institution for all quality and accreditation and uh, at a short notice and request he has been kind enough to grace this function again on behalf of our university on my personal behalf and all the incoming students I extend a very warm welcome to dr razdan may I require uh, may I request uh, dr kulkarni to welcome dr razdan with a proper yeah. yeah. today's function uh, truly belongs to our incoming students and their parents and uh, despite the pandemic situation we have received warming response from our students and on behalf of our university and all the participants of this function again i welcome all our incoming new student and their parents for this inaugural function i also welcome media personnel who are covering uh, this function last but not least again it is my great pleasure a pleasure to welcome all my colleagues uh, who have been supporting this inaugural function and the admission process for a long long time on my personal behalf and on behalf of our university again i welcome all my colleagues to this inaugural function let me conclude this welcome address on a note of promise and pride assurance and action we promise to provide and ensure you the environment encouragement exposure and experience to facilitate effective and rewarding learning to stand up to the needs and trends and the trends of very high standard we want you to emerge and prosper as global citizen with impeccable with impeccable integrity and enviable anyway professional excellence and dr kalam said without your involvement you cannot succeed with your involvement you cannot fail it is within you to harness your and our potential to gain expertise in your specialization in the days to come my colleagues will brief you about uh, the excellent infrastructure available at various departments directorates techno center innovation center and incubation center i take this opportunity to, to wish our new students all the best for their academic journey in our university i am sure they will have a joyous learning enriched outlook for their specialization and gain excellent proficiency to pursue their dreams and aspiration i urge them to dream high think high and achieve high i started with a, a quote or a statement of dr radhakrishnan again let me conclude by one of his statement way back in 1966 if money is lost nothing is lost if health is lost something is lost if character is lost everything is lost thank you thank you professor kadambisa for a very detailed description of the ethos of the university as well as the warm welcome shubham karoti kalyanam arogyam dhana sampada shatru buddhi vinashaya deepa jyoti namostute i fold my hands before the light that brings prosperity auspiciousness good health abundance of wealth and destruction of the enemy's intellect may i request the dignitaries on the dais to kindly light the lamp that will light the path 
and futures of our young students here today. May I request two students to join them, please? Thank you so much. In Shri Mr. Srinivas Murthy, we have an able CEO, a role that is a natural consequence to his illustrious career as a member of the Indian Administrative Service. He has served in the power sector as the chairman of the Karnataka Electricity Regulatory Commission and has held important positions in government of Karnataka and the central government, including additional chief secretary, finance department and principal secretary, rural, rural development, commissioner, Bangalore City Corporation, principal secretary, election commission of India and controller, ISRO Satellite Center, Department of Space, Government of India. I request you, sir, to make your opening remarks, please. <clears throat> Honorable uh, Chancellor of Ramaya University of Applied Sciences, Dr. Jairam, our uh, distinguished guest, Professor B. N. Raghunandan, a very eminent scientist who has come to um, ensure that there is a very auspicious learned beginning to the entry of our uh, students here in the university. Uh, Professor Kadambi, the acting vice chancellor. Uh, Professor Sundresh, the pro vice chancellor. Dr. Sai Baba, Professor Razdan, and all the friends um, from the university. And last but not the least, all the students who are entering the portals of our university today, this auspicious morning, uh, even though virtually for the present. Uh, I will keep my remarks brief because we all look forward to the learned words of Professor B. N. Raghunandan and our blessings of our Chancellor this morning. It has been mentioned that the motto of our university is Gnanam Vignanancha Bhakti Saitam. A few words about this. What does this imply? What does this signify? Dhanam is knowledge, Vignanam is skill, technology, and Bhakti is nothing but your character and your personality. These are the three dimensions of every person who is in the university that will be worked on by all your distinguished colleagues here, uh, teachers. Just now, Professor Katambi made a promise that we are going to take charge of your lives and make you into ideal global citizens. And that's a promise that not only the pro vice chancellor or the acting vice chancellor makes to the student, but that's a promise made on behalf of every one of the people sitting here, right from the chancellor down to every member of the faculty and every member of the administrative setup here. We are taking on this big responsibility 
of making sure that everyone who comes here with the vast amount of trust and vast amount of hope about future is actually taken care of in the best possible manner. Now, that is the entire spirit of today's function. And I think all of us have to commit ourselves to this very challenging task of guiding the students who are entering the portals of this university. We have gone through a very difficult year. Hopefully, we have left it behind. And in the new year, we will have more happy situations and more exciting you know, possibilities for the future of all our uh, students. Our chancellor has always has been emphasizing on making sure that our students who come here not merely go and write well in the examinations. This is not meant to be a university to prepare people for examinations and score marks. The very title of this university is the University of Applied Sciences. So students not only need to be given the theoretical knowledge in all the disciplines that they come here to study, but they also have to get adequate practical orientation, be it engineering, be it dental sciences, be it pharmacy, be it even social sciences, which we have just now started. So that is why we just don't stop merely giving them lectures and notes and ask them to write, memorize all these things and write in the examinations. They need to be trained to become future scientists, future professional engineers, future leaders in whatever field they enter upon. That is the kind of true meaning of university education or higher education. And if we simply become a college to produce students who just acquire degrees, then there will be no meaning to the title that we have. That is, we are a university of applied sciences, not merely a college giving degrees. We not only pursue gnanam, but vignanam and also bhakti, the character that is so essential. The university has not only excellent infrastructure here, which has been painstakingly built up by the chancellor over the years, but also we have been trying to build links with the industry in terms of industry collaboration, research. We have also been trying to take our students to the portals of foreign universities so that there is some element of internationalization of higher education here. We have had memoranda of understanding with universities in the United States, where our students, part of the time during the course of their four years or three years degree, part of the time they can go over and spend in a foreign university and widen the horizons of their knowledge. And part of the time, they should be willing to go and interact with people in the university being located in the midst of a, an industrial estate in Bangalore. And they should learn how to apply knowledge that they acquire here in the real world. I'm very happy that the new education policy adopted by government of India lays emphasis on this kind of students being taken out of the classroom and actually given practical training, students being allowed freedom to have multiple options in what subjects they would like to study, and students being given, even if necessary, a break in their four-year or three years degree program for a while to go out and work in an environment which is conducive to the future professions that they would like to follow and then come back to pursue the degree. Freedom to transfer from one college to another college without loss of credits. 
So we are entering upon a, a very, very new era of higher education in this country. And on many occasions, we have deliberated upon that in our university. And I'm very sure that the vice chancellor, the pro chancellors and the faculty are fully equipped to guide the students of our university into this new and exciting adventure of pursuing these new education policies objectives. I take this opportunity to wish the brightest of future for all those young people who are entering the portals of this university today. Wish you all the very best and a very happy new year. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. You truly gave a beautiful description of the motto of the university, Jnanam Vijnanam Bhakti Sahitam. All of us are driven by the need to know that we will one day achieve success through our contributions and efforts. And what better way than to hear the words from those who have succeeded before us. We are indeed privileged to have an illustrious personality as Professor Raghunandan as our chief guest today. Professor B.N. Raghunandan served as the former Dean of Engineering at Indian Institute of Science. He completed his BTEC at IIT Bombay and his PhD at IISC. The professor is an expert in combustion and propulsion, atomization and spray formation in propulsive devices and space propulsion systems. He has over 200 research publications, 80 technical reports and several book reviews to his credit and has delivered many invited lectures. He has guided more than 50 masters and doctoral students is entrusted with the task of developing the second campus of IAC in Karnataka. Earlier, he was the chairman of the Department of Aerospace Engineering and chairman of the Earth and Environmental Sciences Division at IASC. Further, he served as an expert member in ASTRA, EMCB panel of armament board and coordinator of the propulsion panel of ARNDB and the convener of the space technology cell, IASC. He was also a visiting scientist in the University of Leeds and Imperial College London. He was an international scholar in Hosei University, Tokyo, and visiting professor at SSRC Aleppo. He has represented India in the International Society for Air Breathing Engines. Further, defense establishments and many other institutions seek his expertise regularly. Professor Raghunandan is also the member of Research and Innovation Council at our university, Ramaya University of Applied Sciences. Professor, may I request you to say a few words to our young and budding students? Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. Jairam, Mr. Srinivas Murthy, we have Professor Kadambi, Professor Sundaresh, Dr. Sai Baba, Dr. Razan, and many accomplished faculty members, staff, and students who are here, and all those who are watching this program from your homes or any other place of convenience. First of all, let me wish the new students, new interns, a welcome to this institution. I must tell you that uh, I've been associated with this institution for the last uh, maybe a decade or so, the Research and Innovation Council, and I can assure you that you have made a good choice. I must also congratulate the parents at this point of time. It's not been easy getting your was trying, getting them to read, study, and compete, and then be successful in joining this place. At this point of time, while you are embarking on your first level of higher education, I want you to think about what is it that you left leave behind at this stage in your life, and what is it that you are going to see in future. The first 12 years of your education, 
particularly the last three, four years, when you passed your 10th standard and the 12th standard, it has been extremely stressful. You are going through large number of tuition classes, competitive examinations, so on and so forth. I think for anybody, and it's not just in this country, it's true all over the world, that phase of life which you have completed was extremely stressful in the last few years. There was a some sort of a regimented educational system which all of us have faced. And uh, now you are going to be liberated. You are free from that type of competition, that type of regimentation, but you are getting into the new form of education. You are free from uniforms, but now you spend a lot of time choosing your dresses. You are going to be, you're not going to be uh, scrutinized by your parents and monitored on a day-to-day -day basis as they did, but you have to monitor yourself. You have to take care of yourself henceforth. You have been, your playful days are in some sense over, but whatever you do henceforth, you have to do with some more seriousness, the university will permit it. The most important thing I will say is a period of uncertainty is over. You keep, I kept wondering, just, what will I be in my life? What will I take? Where will I be? And so on. Now you have chosen a career. This is a professional educational part. Now you have chosen whether you are pharmacy or dental sciences or engineering. You know you are going to be an engineer or dentist or a pharmacy specialist. This is a major decision in your life and you should not, you know, it may not have dawn on you that you have made a big decision in your life now to be somebody in a particular profession. It's going to remain with you for all time to come. So you should make use of the best, make use of the institution to the level that you can really compete with the world. You're also going to go through a transition in your life. You're in the later part of your teenage. I guess most of the students are will be around 16 to 18 years of age. And you will transit when you leave, you'll be a youth around 22 years. And that's a big transition. As I said, you, you can't be, you can't be taking your life lightly any longer. You are imparted. You're going to be trying to be a citizen of this world and you need to work for that. So that is what you, you, you're left behind those days of uh, what I said is uh, competition. But you get to a new system. What is awaiting for you in the days to come? There is, as I said, there's a professionalism in life. I, I know when you get out of uh, your competitive examinations and so on, I said, I did say that you, you're liberated. I remember I, at this point of time when I was teaching in Japan, this university career was called as leisure land. University is considered as leisure land where you don't really have to go through that type of coaching classes, that type of rigorous, uh, you know, learning and uh, studying through the night and so on. But you, you get into a little leisurely, you are choosing your path of life. You can make the best of it. You are actually going to, all these years, you're always thinking about how to learn things, whereas science or uh, mathematics or any other subject. But then now you're getting into a new phase. You'll have to learn how to think. From, from thinking to learn to learning to think. You must learn how to think and henceforth such that you do very well in your profession. How to make use of the surroundings and how to really progress in your life. You are the ones who are going to drive your, drive your activities. Just as an example, I can tell you, your extracurricular activities in your schools were actually drawn by your teachers. They will tell you, do this or that. Henceforth, the university will give you an option of do what you think is best. That's going to be your choice. You are going to be the driver for large number of activities in this place. Therefore, as I said, do think before you start something. You were in uh, all these years, 
you were in sort of a cozy neighborhood. Now you are going to meet the students. You are you're going to have classmates and friends from very diverse backgrounds. They come from many different parts of the country. They speak different languages. They have different habits. You will learn a lot of things from all of them. It is not just the classroom learning. You will learn by being with them. You will you must learn about how the whole world moves, and that's going to be a big change in your life. Although the university has guaranteed that going to do best for you and they're going to work for you, you must remember the school teachers were actually not just teaching you, they were making sure that you learned very well whatever you what you taught them. There used to be classrooms of 40, 50 persons in a classroom in schools. You might, I do not know how many are there in this place. You might end up in classrooms where there are 100 students. It's not possible for a teacher to monitor each one of you. The responsibility is with, going to be with you. So they're, they're lecture, but then it is your job to learn many of these things. They are not going to try and reform each one of you. Okay? They do not have a way of doing it. So it is your responsibility to see to be on the right path in life. Be very careful on this matter. You are also going to go through a phase of life where you form your ideologies. You might even have a political leanings. You have thinking of what is right, what is wrong. But do remember, educational institutions are not the platform to express your views. You might have your inclinations, you might have your views, but this is a place to learn things. This is not a place where you can start practicing your idea. You might form it. I think it's perfectly fine to have your views, but then please use the university in the right way to learn things. I think that's, that's very important. I must mention because in the days to come, we are going to see more of these problems. You might sit in a lecture hall now and learn subjects. And uh, you might even wonder what is there in this so much, you know, some subject is being simple. But I, I want to tell you, I, I was a teacher myself. I mean, I have taught for 38 years and teaching is not a simple job. It's the teachers who prepare a lot to get to this stage of your education, I can also tell you since I've been participating, there are boards of studies, lots of number of experts sit together, decide, what, is, what should be taught to a set of students? And that's a dynamic system. There are things changing in the world. They have to distill and tell you these are the subjects you should learn to be successful. And every teacher, even if he has taught many hours, will have to prepare for his lecture. As a new faculty, anybody here, you will be preparing something like 15, 16 hours for one, for one hour of lecture. And even when you are when you have taught the subject for many years, you need at least two, three hours of preparation to come to this room. The point I'm trying to tell the students is, don't take these lectures very lightly. There is a distilled knowledge which comes from teachers. You may have a lot of information available on the internet, but that's not going to surprise. You are actually in an age which is, so what I say is the information overdose, you do not know how to sift the good from the unimportant. What is it important that you should use and what is unimportant? It is the teachers who have already done that and tell you how to learn subjects. So I think it is important you develop a healthy respect for your teachers in, this, in the university. It is that respect helps you a great deal in the future. You must also understand this is the time your knowledge base is going to increase to a level you probably surpass your parents in their total knowledge base that they have. I mean, I, as I see senior person, I can tell you my knowledge is outdated and my children know better. But then you must know that that knowledge does not bring you wisdom. The wisdom that the seniors have, I think you must respect that all the time. And that takes you a long way in seeing that you will really live very well in your life. I was talking about internet and classrooms. I think this is something uh, 
you want to be very, very careful. I, use, I have told this in many platforms that today the world we are without internet, we are unable to do many things. But with the internet, you don't seem to be doing anything. <laughs> so you don't, you spend all your time looking at things. You're not involving yourself, you're not doing anything yourself. That's very important. So as I said, it's a knowledge overdose and then something fascinates, but I think keep that to a minimum. You must know, you must, you have it, you know, an objective, you have a goal in the universe and you should go through that. My last point would be, you are in a very dynamic world. You are global citizens. You are going to go all over the world and you're going to be you might be an expert in some other country. You might bring expertise from some other country to this land. And it's a dynamic, as I said, the knowledge grows in an exponential fashion. There are a large number of things happen and all those happenings, actually you try to get it into your own field of activity. Something happens in electronics, Aerospace engineering is going to be redefined because of that. Somebody happens with the uh, Internet of Things and our pharmacy students will have something more to learn. So it is that exponential forum, everything keeps adding. And so much happens today. I recall that there is a book called uh, Future Shock. I don't know how many of you are familiar by um, Alvin Toffler written in 1971, who talked of how the future is going to be, and we are in that shock. The shock is things happen so fast that the human beings will be unable to cope with it. And we are almost inside the shock, and we may not be recognizing it. The time you learn first year, and you come to the fourth year, the what you learned in first year may be outdated, and then you may have to relearn some of these things. So the point is, your continuous learning is your, you have to learn all through your life continuously. And this is where you get your foundation here, but that's not all. You, you are now getting into a professional life where all through your life you'll be learning. Uh, I must say that uh, this is also the period when you make some of the best friends in your lives. They come from many different places. They bring many cultures, as I mentioned. And they will be, they, you will grow very close. I can tell you again, these four years you make friends and you may go to different parts of the world, different professions. But I can tell you from my own experience, 50 years later, you will try to get all of them into contact. You will try to call them and talk to them and then find that in when you are at the work the senior citizens and then the twilight of your life, you will recall this phase of life as something of a wonder. I think, therefore, choose your friends well, love your friends, and I think don't, don't, don't be victims of minor irritations, small differences, make the best of your friendship amongst all the people. And I will say that, now, as I said, you will come from many different places. You are dining here. You will go to many, very large part of the world. But do remember your roots. The root requires nourishment all the time. Get back, do whatever you can to your roots and build it up. The root part of it includes an educational institution of this type, which nurtures you. You must get back and see what best you can do in your later life. So all the best. And once again, I join all the others in wishing you a very happy 2021, hopefully COVID free and uh, healthy and prosperous year. Best luck again to all the students. Thank you very much, sir. And thank you so much for the emphasis on the conversion of the student from a student to a lifelong learner. That was a very important take home message 
for each of the young participants in today's function. During times of crisis or change, human values remain constant. Our values enable us to address complex crises observed in the contemporary world. And that explains why the chancellor, Dr. M. R. Jairam, called our doctors to tell them that we should do our best for our community during the pandemic. Ramaya Hospitals was the first hospital to be geared to treat COVID-19 and easily had one of the largest dedicated COVID centers in the private sector. We have also been the first to provide post-COVID care in Karnataka. Credit must go to our chancellor who has consistently emphasized to us the need for value-based education. May I request you, sir, to make your presidential remarks, please. Surrendering myself to the divine, Professor Dr. B. N. Raghunandan, the members of the management of the university, and dear students and parents. Professor Kadambi, while well, welcoming all of you to this university, has described the philosophy of knowledge. We are just in the entry of to the doors of the university. So you should know what this knowledge is all about. He has quoted from saints to philosophers and to scientists. You need all of them to give advice of what the knowledge is all about. So it was a very comprehensive when he spoke about the knowledge. My dear students, I think you are ready to know what the knowledge is all about. This is going to be a lifelong journey. I don't know how much you can grasp. How much you grasp, that is you are, I think you have achieved what uh, many people may, have, may not have able to get that knowledge. The second speaker was Mr. Srinivas Murthy. He spoke about the, now you're just entering the university and what this university is all about. Vijnana. He spoke about the skills. Without skills, I don't think you will be of much use to, to the world. Today, this world is of innovations. But people are craving for newer innovations. And economies are built on innovations and factories. The whole commerce is built on this. The countries have developed on this philosophy. So there's a great need for innovations and how innovative you are. It is just not the knowledge that you are going to acquire, but it is this knowledge, how you are going to put it into practice. This is where you students are going to be judged when you leave this portals of this university. See, Srinivas Murthy has been telling you that this is a, going to be a skill-based university. Everything that is here can go to the labs. Labs are open. Labs are where you start learning more than sitting in a classroom and teacher comes and teaches you for one hour. So this new environment, 
That's why we call it the applied sciences. This is exactly what the new education policy has been talking about. We don't want to create knowledge people or only who can, who have got the theoretical knowledge, but we need people who are acceptable where you can go and be acceptable to the industries all over the world. This is uh, going to be a, the big challenge for you people because this country cannot afford to give all our students the jobs. You have to go out. You have to build your, your profession. You have to be, make yourself known. You, you have to make the people acceptable that you have the knowledge. And that is going to be a big uh, challenge for you because there are number of industries or organizations which are going to not simply take you because you, you have got something. They will test you at every single point, whether you have that knowledge or not. Therefore, he has assured you that this is the place where you can really learn. And this is a place where all our faculties will give you a helping hand of developing these skills, which is a, still a new environment in our Indian system of education. So you will be benefited by it. That is our philosophy in our university. Thirdly, Professor Raghunandan, a great teacher, he spoke about bhakti. Bhakti is nothing but assimilation of knowledge. If you are not able to take that knowledge in, you are not being able to, you, you cannot become a man of wisdom or you cannot be a man of knowledge. And knowledge can come when you humbly say, I have not, I don't know, I would like to acquire this knowledge then that knowledge automatically comes to you and it will imbibe in you. That's exactly what a, a teacher wants a student to be. Teacher wants you to be humble and ask him, please give me the knowledge. And here's a man that he's a good student and I, I'm here to give him all that knowledge that I have he will not keep anything with him and he will share with you every knowledge that he has learned. That is a teacher. That is exactly what a teacher he was, he was trying to tell you that here, you, if you want the best of what the teachers can give you, you have to be humble, you have to crave and you have to go with him with folded hands, with looking at his feet and say, please give me that knowledge. That is what bhakti is all about. Jnanam, vijnanam, bhakti, sahi, bhakti sahitam. Without bhakti, all this becomes useless. So Dr. Raghunandan has beautifully put before you, the students, how you can acquire this knowledge. That's a, that's a gateway for you is through bhakti humbleness, to acquire knowledge. Now there is nothing left for me to talk. All that I can say is, I pray God to give you strength to have bhakti. Let me tell you, my young students, to have bhakti, you need great inner strength. That can be given only by a teacher. So I pray to the teachers to give you that inner strength to acquire that knowledge. That's all that as a chancellor, I can tell you. So God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your profound words of wisdom and your sincere blessings to each of the students. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. To express thanks, I call upon our Pro Vice Chancellor of Health Sciences, Dr. D.C. Sundaresh. Besides being a very reputed orthopedic surgeon, 
with more than 35 years of experience, he has been an ardent teacher for arthroscopic surgeries of the knees, hip, and spinal surgery. He conceived and established the Advanced Learning Center, a one-of-its-kind skill center in India for skill development for health professionals. I remember some of his former colleagues saying that his presence in the orthopedics department would charge everyone with enthusiasm, just like his name, DC Sundaresh or Direct Current Sundaresh. <laughs> May I invite you to give the vote of thanks, please, sir. Honorable Chancellor, sir, Dr. M. R. Jairam, Chief Guest of the Function, Sri B. M. Raghunandan, Acting Vice Chancellor, Professor Kadambi, our Chief Executive Officer of GF Medical, Sri M. R. Srinivas Murthy, the Registrar, Professor Sai Baba, the Dignitaries of the Dais. Staff members of the University of Applied Sciences, invitees, members of the media. It's a wonderful function to be here. I shall start by thanking the Acting Vice Chancellor, Professor Karambi, for organizing this program at very short notice in a very wonderful way, taking care of all the details. It's a pleasure to have with us Professor Raghunandan, who is no stranger to this university, from whom you have all heard in very simple words, what is expected of a student. And I think these words will be memorable to you if you bother to listen to it and have paid attention to it. I thank you, sir, for having taken time off to be with us today. And I wish to remind the students the new norm of offline programs and offline classes has created an environment where you can listen to everything again and again. So please remember that this program is recorded. And if you want to listen to the gan of, gan of all the wonderful people who have spoken today, you will have it available to you at any point of time. I have never been in the, any other function that speaks so lucidly about the importance of learning and the importance of education. Thank you, sir, the Chancellor, for being with us today and giving us your inputs about education. And Dr. Emma Srinivas Murthy. Yeah. What you have learned today and heard today is very rarely spoken about. Nobody speaks about love, nobody speaks about bhakti. For some reason or the other, it is all pushed to the background. And you've heard it today in the best form that it can be assimilated by all of you. I thank all the speakers who have contributed to this important aspect to the students. Lastly, the students, you are the purpose for which we are all here. Please feel assured that you have made a good choice of being here in this University of Applied Sciences. It's a pleasure to have you all and welcome you all to this program. All the faculty members have taken a great, made a great effort in the last nine months of the COVID-19 pandemic to ensure that they share their knowledge with you. And it would not be out of place to say thanks to all the faculty members and the support staff 
who have made this happen. You know, it's a pleasure to have Professor Raghunandan with us to acknowledge his presence. I would request a small memento to be handed over to him. Thank you again, sir. This is this is just to remind you that we will be with us more often. <laughs> Mr. Parshuraman from the Faculty of uh, Pharmacy needs a special uh, acknowledgement today because he's the one who made it possible for us to transmit this program on YouTube Live. And of course, the one that gave me some electricity, Professor Ribar Shetty, is always a wonderful speaker and adds life to any program. Thank you, Dr. Ribar, for giving me the new title. It's been a wonderful thing here. And I thank the organizer of this function, Professor Kadambi, the acting vice chancellor, for giving me this opportunity to be here today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sundaresh. Ladies and gentlemen, shall we please rise for the national anthem? <laughs> Punjab Singh Gujarat Maratha Dravida Uttala Ganga Vindya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Uchala Jaladita Ranga Tava Shubha Nami Jage Tava Shubha Ashish Mage Gahe Tava Jaya Gata Janagana Mangala Dayaka Jaya He Bharat Bhagya Vidata Jaya He Jaya He Jaya He Jaya 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 He Jaya He with that, we come to the conclusion of the inauguration of the undergraduate programs. We thank all our guests and uh, all the attendees, and we wish you all a very happy 2021. Thank you. Thank you.